shall we start? Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, so in the first place, congratulations, congratulations to everyone who managed to find this room. Um, it's a bit like uh, Dungeons of, and Dragons where you can, you, you choose the wrong way and you get to NHS conference, for example, <laughs> which is not bad, but maybe not necessarily what you're looking for. So, and uh, uh, we could uh, keep a minute of silence for everyone who wasn't able to find this room. Uh, but yeah, okay, let's, uh, let's start. <coughs> um, so Unicode uh, will be the topic for the next 45 minutes. Uh, very brief explanation for everyone that uh, I haven't uh, yet uh, met personally. Uh, I'm a, a gen information security generalist. I had very broad experience from 90s, starting from low level assembly um, uh, binary hacking, uh, mm, penetration testing, uh, application development in various languages, and uh, managing teams, etc. Um, I have settled down as uh, around the uh, software development lifecycle management, uh, developing uh, mm, uh, DevSecOps pipelines, etc. So this is something that I'm doing currently, primarily in the financial sector. Uh, I came to UK from Poland uh, like five years ago and uh, I have created a joint company with my colleagues uh, uh, called Immusec that is essentially providing all kind of Im information security services uh, across uh, UK. I also written uh, a, a project on maybe more of a research uh, website called webcookies.org which is uh, used for scanning uh, other websites for privacy features, security features, etc. Um, I'm on LinkedIn, Twitter, so if you need to ask me something, I'm very open to uh, answering, answering your questions. Um, now we'll be talking about the Unicode. And uh, the Unicode is uh, mm, something that I like uh, on a very uh, personal, emotional level. So this all started when I was trying to understand how to solve some scary, you know, uh, tip, very typical for Unicode uh, mm, uh, problem of uh, decoding some files uh, with strange Unicode encoding, etc. Uh, getting lots of exceptions in Python, in Java, etc. And I bought a huge Unicode book, which is like a, you know, I have, don't know if you have seen it, it's like a four or five kilograms brick, you know, thousand pages. <laughs> Uh, and it didn't answer any of my questions because it's not about, you know, programming Unicode. It's a catalog of Unicode characters. It's absolutely amazing. It's beautiful. It's like, uh, you know, you suddenly realize uh, how many uh, different writing systems, scripts, uh, characters that were introduced over the hi history of humanity. So I discovered uh, languages like uh, linear A and B script from uh, Creed. Uh, you see all the ideographs. It's really, really nice to, to watch. Um, so this is how it started uh, in my case with Unicode. However, the past and the, the you know, the, the future of uh, Unicode in my case was much more bumpy in reality. So um, th there's a one reason why I decided to create this presentation. It was like, a, you know, bubbling for the last few years. I was writing articles, uh, uh, writing on Stack Overflow on this subject. Essentially, it seemed like this is a, uh, this topic of Unicode text validation and generally free text validation um, always somehow slipped through the guidance on application security. And as an author and co-author of a number of, um, uh, of uh, a number of OWASP uh, cheat sheets, I was always having a feeling that we are missing something. So I decided just to go research the topic and write this presentation. So these are few quotes uh, from different uh, OWASP in information security related uh, sources, which essentially tell you how difficult is it to validate free text and especially uh, Unicode free text. We won't go through, you know, I won't read them because it doesn't make much sense. It's just the, the general idea of validation being difficult is what I wanted to demonstrate. <coughs> um, a quick reminder of where does Unicode, Unicode uh, come from and what the problem, what is the problem it's trying to solve. So this is the letter uh, O. Um, it's uh, one of my uh, native Polish uh, language. And I, have, I was surprised to discover it's actually represented in so many 
languages some of them I've never actually heard of. And I'm just using it uh, because, you know, it's the first uh, uh, letter in Polish uh, alphabet and uh, uh, it's just looking nice. So in the in 90s, um, there was a huge problem. And un I mean, unless you are uh, speaking one of the non-English or non-Latin languages, you probably haven't really seen the problem. But all around Europe, all around the world, in countries not using English language, so for example in Poland, it was a huge problem when uh, we started to write software and we wanted the software to speak to the user in their native language. Um, and we found out that the um, uh, ASCII car set is not enough. And it was in deep 90s, 80s, where this problem started to be perceived as a real uh, user usability um, uh, obstruction. So the first, uh, the easiest solution uh, that people were doing, and if you were active on IRC, for example, you could see a lot of people writing like this, was to replace you know, the, the, the uh, native characters as the closest uh, Latin um, uh, equivalent. Uh, so this, is, this was the first solution, which was not very um, uh, good because it was uh, leading to a lot of semantic problems, lots of uh, uh, funny mistakes, etc. So again, on IRC, there's pl plenty of stories uh, about uh, guys writing to a girl with some proposals without Polish characters and getting you know, horror stories essentially. I will not go into the details, but if you are Polish, you'll know what I mean. Um, so then various application and operating system uh, vendors started to try to solve this problem. They did it by using part of the ASCII character set and replacing the less common uh, character. So for example, you know, all the, diag uh, all the uh, punctuation characters by the native character. So for example, in Windows uh, 1250 uh, character set, uh, the letter O is uh, at the position of uh, A5. Um, it doesn't really matter, but what, is, what really matters is that in another standard, most common on Unix systems, uh, the le same letter was at position A1. So obviously, and this was the same story with all the uh, different uh, characters. Uh, at the end of the day, you could have the same character with very different codes. So this is the name where the code page came, uh, the, the concept of code page uh, came from. And it led to enormous, enormous mess. So for example, what you, ca you can see in the title of the slide is a you know, typical word written in Polish language with wrong uh, code page or character set. Um, so uh, at the end of the day, uh, the, the, so to gi just give you an idea of how big the mess was, uh, in 90s, I was writing uh, a software, a very short C program, which became very popular back then in Poland, that was used to convert uh, different character encodings. And when I was <coughs> writing it, I started with just two. When I finished writing it after a year or so, you know, updating, adding new features on the user's uh, request, I ended up with something like 15 different uh, ways of encoding Polish characters in, in Polish alone. So you can imagine how it was uh, in other countries. And you can see the same in Russian. I, tend, I also happen to speak in Russian, so in Russian you have, you have also at least two uh, major encodings being used. Uh, and you know, there's a lot of situation when you load a page, uh, especially on some ancient servers, uh, and you get complete mess, and then you realize, okay, okay, yeah, I have to manually change the encoding of the page, and then voila, you get the uh, text you can understand. So what Unicode did with that, with all this mess, it replaced all of these different encodings with a single character that is uh, uh, essentially uh, common for all the languages. So there's no, there's a unique code, there's no longer, <coughs> oh, thank you. Uh, there's no longer uh, different code pages, etc. And this is, this was actually ac absolutely fantastic moment. However, a Unicode obviously uh, brought a bit of uh, headache as well. And uh, I'm sure you've seen this in the past when you write, for example, 
uh, some HTML in uh, you know, Microsoft Word, LibreOffice Writer, whatever, you type this HTML code, you paste it into, you know, um, for example, HTML page, and you get something that is completely broken. So essentially, what has happened here, this double quotes, which are ASCII double quotes, which you typed, were cleverly replaced by uh, this uh, mm, uh, typesetting program into Unicode um, double quotes, which have completely different meaning. They are completely meaningless from HTML point of view. They are seen as a regular text. So this is just one of the typical problems that you can uh, see in this case. And we'll be discussing this in very detail later on. Um, so there's a lot of things and a lot of uh, headache you will surely and you have surely seen with Unicode in the past. All of these messages that you have seen writing your programs, all of these uh, swear words that you have said, uh, all the searches on Stack Overflow, what I've done wrong, how do I do this correctly, this is also Unicode. However, taking all this headache that we had in the past, I think Unicode is a wonderful thing and it solves a lot of problem. So the, the best way of living uh, well with Unicode in the, in the Unicode world is just to forget everything you have learned in the past about uh, you know, uh, encodings, characters, uh, the byte values of the, of the characters, especially if you had some transition technologies like the MBTS and U UTS that you, if you coded for Windows, you probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, we just need to make a kind of mental paradigm shift. There's a, there's a mental transition we need to make from thinking about text as of a sequence of bytes to thinking about text, about some kind of abstract uh, class, abstract, abstract object present in your program's memory that you just pro pro process character by character. And it's not, not difficult. It's something we already done with memory management, for example. So uh, we quite easily made a shift uh, from thinking about memory in terms of uh, malloc blocks, you know, the buffers, the uh, zero termination, etc., to, you know, just not thinking about them because they are dealt uh, automatically by Java, by Python, or, or any other, other language. Uh, so if you have the, um, you are not lucky to still write a language where you have to think about it in C, obviously you have to be double careful, but if you write in any modern language, you just forget about strings, characters, bytes, etc. This, this is completely different, and it's, uh, it helps a lot to, to avoid all these problems. Um, so let's go and analyze the you know, character on once again. So in Unicode, this is called character. And you just, again, you just forget about any kind of bytes, etc. It's just a character. And it's a one character that you, you know, have in a, in a text. If you run a length test on your string, it will return one, one character. That's it. Um, Moreover, this character has a name, and every character in Unicode has a unique name that uniquely identifies it um, across all the other uh, Unicode uh, characters. Uh, this is two important things. This name also indicates what kind of character is that. So O is a letter, for example, uh, unlike space, which is a space, and also the script. So this is a Latin character. It's not uh, Cherokee, it's not Klingon, it's not linear A, it's Latin character O. And this, this, will, this actually will be helping us a lot in validation of um, the string. Uh, then, in addition to names, because uh, referencing to characters by their name in programs is quite difficult, it's just too long, every character also has its code point. Code point has nothing to do, is it me walking disconnecting something? Okay, I'll just try, try to stand still. Um, there's a code point. Uh, however, coined code point, you just cannot think about code point as a uh, encoding or something like byte representation. It's not, it has nothing to do with that. It's just a catalog number. So if you open this huge uh, Unicode book, uh, there is a characters uh, 103, 104, and 
character, character 104 uh, tends to be character on. And uh, you can actually refer to these characters uh, as I can show, I, I am showing here in Python code. There is a absolutely fantastic library called Unicode Data in Python. Uh, I think it was introduced in Python 3 uh, and it's part of the, the, the kind of uh, standard, standard library. And you know, you can just type here any character from the Unicode set and you get just this character. Uh, for convenience, for you know, inlining the characters in, a, in strings, you can also use this uh, backslash u form. Uh, if the character has a long code point, you can use backslash capital U. Um, again, it looks like a bit, it looks a lot like backslash x for entering bytes in line in a, in a Python string, but it's nothing to do with that. It's just a way of referencing to Unicode characters by their uh, code point. And you can do the other way around. So you can take a character, get its name, uh, etc. So I want to iterate once again, this is not encoding, it's a catalog number of a character. So what is encoding? So if you use UTF encodings, and there's a lot of encodings, this is encoding for this character. As you can see, it's got nothing to do with this, uh, this, uh, this, this code point. Um, UTF-8 UTF is most universal, most uh, usable uh, encoding for uh, Unicode, so it's most commonly seen everywhere. It's used in web environments, uh, uh, operating systems, etc. Most uh, frequently used encoding is UTF-8, and it's because it's compact, and it's uh, got a lot of other nice features which I'll talk about later. There's an, there, there are other encodings as well. So for example, this is uh, UTF-16BE, so big endian encoding. And as you can see, there is a coincidence that this uh, uh, character encoding in case of UTF-16 big endian is similar or identical with the code point of this character. But again, forget about it. Don't treat it as a, um, a, a usable feature because it's only for a subset of character. If you, if you encode uh, this uh, smiley uh, face uh, using six UTF-16, you'll get completely different encoding. So th there will be no longer coincidence between the uh, encoding and uh, the code point. There is a uh, low endian encoding, you just you know, reverse. Uh, UTF-32, UTF-32 uh, low endian, and there is also very exotic encoding called UTF-7, which I don't like, uh, but I have included it simply because there is, there was a few years ago, there was an attack that used uh, mm, uh, essentially the confusion of the browser, uh, thinking the text is encoded as UTF-7 or auto-detecting it, uh, to execute uh, cross-site scripting. It's been long fixed, so I don't really think it's worth to uh, mm, uh, put much attention on it. But the thing is, uh, why I don't like UTF-7? Because uh, if we start thinking about uh, Unicode strings as you know, abstract objects, we no longer need to think about them in terms of encoding. So essentially, we just take a string in Unicode and we just called the encode method to produce a serializable string from it and that's it. So this is the same like you have a, a, a picture representation in memory in your program. You want to dump it as JPEG, you just call a method to dump it as JPEG. You want to dump it as a P PNG image, you just call a method to dump it as PNG and that's it. So if you have, a, for example, if you save a PNG image uh, from your program, and want to encode it as, um, as an as a ASCII string to include it in HTML, you would just use base64. And this is the same thing here. If you want to you know, serialize your Unicode string in UTF-8 and then base64, this is probably the way forward rather than using uh, UTF-7, which is confusing for many ways. Um, <coughs> a bit about uh, now we start moving into the security area. Now about all kind of uh, Unicode related fun and attacks that we have seen uh, over the last many years. So this is a regular Unicode string and if you get really uh, good designer eye, you'll probably see that these uh, characters are not really consistent in their uh, font, font face. Actually, 
in this case, every single character is from different scripts. This is a typical uh, Unicode homoglyph. So you can see, uh, except for this three two, no, three last characters, which are from the same script, all of them are from different, Armenian, etc. And this is actually the first thing that you should, should give you a hint about how to uh, validate and sanitize the Unicode string in your application. Because this is obviously something is wrong. If you have a string that is composed from characters from completely different, um, um, completely different uh, scripts, uh, and uh, you get this on input as a human name, for example, where there's a chances are uh, someone is either uh, you know typing laboriously typing every character from from different thing, or they are just trying to do something wrong, or you are on an information security conference where this is being presented as an example. So you can see how wrong this string is immediately if you use Unicode data library. And actually, in a terminal, it's much more inconsistent than on the screen. And you call this Unicode data dot name class, and you see all the names displayed for all these characters, and you can see they are all from different scripts. And uh, actually, some of them are not characters, they are digits, which is another hint on how <laughs> to validate this uh, string. So how do we survive this? How do we live with Unicode? The, fir the, uh, the first rule was about forgetting everything uh, from the old ASCII world. Uh, so inside your application, you should be uh, thinking about text <coughs> composed of characters and just forget about, uh, forget about the bytes. This is what we already have said. To process Unicode text in your application, you have to first decode the binary string on input into text in your application on input. And then on output, you just uh, encode it back into uh, the binary string of Unicode uh, when you are done with the processing. So this is an example. We got uh, the data. Uh, we got the metadata that tells us what character set, essentially what encoding we need to, uh, was applied to this text. We decode this text. And here we have to remember the exceptions. We'll be talking about this later on. And we output the text for test. We do some processing here. So we essentially turn every character from lowercase to uppercase, which is also a nice feature of uh, <coughs> Unicode. Uh, and then you output. And you can output in different encodings. You can output into back into UTF-8, or you can output to UTF-16, or whatever encoding you would like. And you can see here, there is nice feature in Unicode. So you get GIF files, or you have PNG files. Each of them have their own signature in the beginning uh, telling you what file type is that. So in case of Unicode, it's also there. It's called uh, um, Unicode byte order mark, which is essentially telling you what is the, is it the big endian or less en lower endian? Uh, in any case, it gives you a hint that this is, an, this is uh, uh, UTF-8. Uh, with um, with uh, UTF-8, it's slightly different and we will talk about it, uh, it's even easier, I would say, and we'll talk about, talk about it uh, slightly in, uh, later. So obviously you will see a lot of problems on the, in the process. And this is where you can uh, see uh, either uh, malformed input or you, get, you can see actual attacks against your application happening exactly at this point. This will be the first line of defense. So you are decoding the text so you are trying to decode UTF-8 text as using ASCII decoder, which is obviously not going to work because ASCII is a very small subset of uh, UTF-8, uh, and you get an exception. You have to handle this ex exception. Uh, how you do this, we'll talk in a second. Uh, why you would apply ASCII <laughs> encoding to decode this UTF string? Well, many, many reasons for that. For example, uh, the content was, the, you know, had a metadata that incorrectly indicated the encoding as ASCII. It was applied as a default, or your application is so old that it's always applying ASCII or not expecting any other encoding from the, from the input. So what, to do, what you do at this point? There is actually, it's a policy decision. There's no single answer here. You have to talk to your business, to your architect, and decide what you want to do with this incorrect input. And it fully depends on your business scenario. So the first thing, 
you can do is just reject. You just say, it's a wrong encoding, so we cannot accept this input. Uh, and this is probably the, face, the, the, the safest way of doing this. You could uh, accept the input and try to, you know, partially losing the information. So in case of um, a Python, you just add this errors ignore uh, option to the encoder and you will have all the unrecognized characters replaced by this special Unicode, uh, you know, replacement character as it's called. And you can still make some sense of it, but you know, that's uh, up to you how to properly interpret it. Or you could try to recover the information. So essentially ignore this wrong uh, uh, metadata that told you it's a wrong uh, encoding. And uh, you could just uh, try to apply auto detection library here, which tell you this is UTF-8 string. So um, how do we validate Unicode? There is a number of, uh, the number of techniques. Um, just a quick technical question, uh, how much time I have left? Five, five. okay, I was thinking it's 45 minutes, the whole presentation. Oh, okay, so, okay, I think we can, uh, okay, we can do slightly more. Uh, okay, so the first thing is character category enforcement. So every Unicode character comes with a category. So essentially, uh, if you run this Unicode category, it will display, display the standard uh, acronyms, which essentially you can see. In all these different languages, the word hello is composed of characters of the same, of the very same category. All of them are letters, well, except for these ideographs, which are ideographs. They are not letters, but also belong to this general group of categories letters. So this is the first thing you do. You try to um, enforce the Unicode category on the text to make sure it's what you expect. The second thing is script enforcement. So you just call they call the Unicode name function, and you look at the encoding. As you can see here, all of these characters in different languages, they each belong to one uh, script. So we have Latin, Cyrillic, CJK, which is Chinese, Japanese, uh, Korean scripts, and Arabic. So you can kind of aggregate these groups. You can uh, determine uh, the characters by uh, script by uh, you know, make them make sure they are consistent. Uh, the next thing you should be doing when in, uh, validating Unicode text is text direction, because in Unicode the direction of the text can be either left to right or left left to right, or right to left. Yeah, uh, and there is also a function for that, which is called bidirectional, and you can also see here that is uh, being uh, validated. There's a lot of these categories. You just, again, make sure it's consistent within your input. So if you have a name, you cannot have a human name that is half of it is written left to right and half of it is written rest right to left. That just doesn't make sense. So enforce consistent text direction. There is one more thing which I left on the, uh, at the end so it doesn't you know, start from confusing you, normalization. So in case of Unicode, some of the characters can be written, and it, again, it doesn't have anything to do with encoding. It's just how characters are be built. So you can have character um, E uh, written as a Latin character E and combining acute accent. So essentially this accent is being visually joined with a letter E, uh, with a letter E uh, by on the, you know, this display in the terminal or you could have just a single character E with acute on the top. And this is single characters. Obviously, it is causing problems when you try to collate, sort, compare these strings or where you're trying to save this. So this is an example where you have comparison of visually identical strings that are not identical from the uh, Unicode point of view. And in addition, they are of different length. So to make this consistent again, you just apply normalization. And there is normalization for normalization functions called uh, with a very confusing acronym, uh, NFC, NFD, NFKD, NFKC. 
which essentially are kind of recursive uh, mm, uh, acronyms, meaning normalization form C, et cetera. It's confusing, but it's really very, very simple. In 90% of cases, you just want to apply the NFC. And it, it's most conservative, it's the best one to use in most cases because it, uh, what it does essentially compresses, kind of joins the string without any loss of data. So it will only apply allowed um, transformation from Unicode point of view. And it will make strings composed differently, the same and consistent for comparison. And the reason why you should worry about that is that you can have inputs from different sources, from different keyboards. Some keyboards will output uh, characters which are, you know, aggregated, and some of them will um, uh, characters that are, you know, composed of two characters. This this is purely arbitrary. Um, there's a lot of this encodings. I will not go into details except for one thing. Um, this Encodings with the K character are compatibility uh, normalization, which can lead to loss of information. And there is one case actually where you want this. This is usually when you have a uh, search, for example, in a text. So this is like uh, raising both strings, traditional strings to uppercase to implement a, a comparison without looking at the uh, character case. So, uh, in case of uh, in case of uh, the NF the compatibility uh, normalization, you would have character Unicode character one half normalized into one slash two, essentially something uh, as you would write it in in old ASCII way. Uh, and actually, this is if you write this in most text processors, it will be replaced by a proper one. Uh, character, single character Unicode. Um, so another, another example, compatibility normalization with precomposed Roman numeral uh, 12, which can be in the first step normalized as Roman numerals X11, so, so 10, 1, 1, and then as Latin letters XII, which is you know, how you would type it in ASCII in a regular way. Another typical example of fractions, there's lots of these examples. They're all well documented and you can be sure they is only applying allowed transformations again in this case. Um, when it's being useful, very good example. Is there X in Roman 12? So if you apply just a regular NFC normalization here, it will tell no because there is no X in Roman 12. If you apply this, NFK normalization, it will say yes, there is X in 12 because it's a uh, uh, composed of these characters after uh, normalization. But you shouldn't be persisting this compatibility uh, normalized string because you obviously lose data. So essentially, just after you input the text, normalize, uh, normalize Unicode text using usually NFC function. Validation strategy. So what should you, how you should apply all these technical steps we have mentioned so far. So first thing, and this is probably the Im most important part of the whole presentation. This is why I left it uh, on the, at the end. So um, you need to speak to your business to understand what is the user base you are talking to and what you input you should be expecting from them. So what is, what does it mean valid strings? Uh, are they going to, are they expected to speak in, you know, Chinese, Angli, English, Polish, Arabic, whatever? Uh, do we expect the text in Linear B, Klingon, or other, you know, dead languages, for example? In mo most cases, you won't. So this makes your life simple. You can apply it, uh, validation by the script, uh, by the character category, by the text direction to filter out very big part of the whole uni uni Unicode standard. What is the validation for regular strings, for example, human names? Are you expecting names that are composed of um, strings, letters only? Or do you need to whitelist some specific characters that are common in names in given language? So for example, uh, apostrophe, dash, or the uh, Roman three numeral, for example. So after you have defined that, and this is something you do with your business, you just apply validation, 
uh, by category, script, text direction, and normalization. And you are pretty much uh, pr pr protected from most of the Unicode attacks. In case of uh, the free text fields, uh, you just again have, have to think what kind of input you are expecting there. Because for example, you may have a comment field that where the people in a ticket will be explaining, well, I clicked file and they will add this infamous uh, left bracket uh, uh, character, uh, where um, which you have to uh, whitelist, uh, and all of this should be normally. And this is something you know I told, I, I explained from my own experience uh, from uh, with past clients. This is something. This all this setting. It's usually part of a package you get from your client as part of a regionalization uh, localization for a specific region. So along, this comes along with collation, currency, numerals, uh, the translation, etc. And you'll be, in most cases, able to get all this uh, pretty well defined uh, and turn this into actual technical validation rules for your application. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, oh, there's a fail here. This character doesn't display. On this computer, on my Linux box, it was displaying okay. So, you know, that's Windows, sorry. But you can see it here. Uh, if you have any questions, yeah? I do have a question. I, I can see some of this in my product experience as well. Uh, Unicode code for space, is it as you uh, input it in? I thought that I knew Unicode before listening to your talk, and I'm really impressed with this. But I'm curious to know, what is the size of the Unicode code point space? Is it, as you hinted here, uh, eight bytes, or is it actually unbounded or large? Well, so I don't think it's uh, it's bound in any way because it doesn't need to. So uh, as long as we can assign, because you know, the, the thing is that uh, we don't really need to think about Unicode code points as you know something that needs to fit in a buffer. It's it's just a number, so it could be theoretically infinite. Currently, the biggest ones I've seen there were something like eight. Uh, 16, uh, something like 24 bytes long, uh, so uh, 24 bits long. So, you know, and it, it seems to be growing with, like, for example, these characters, they were being added over time to Unicode, and they are all time being added. So, so all this MOG, there's whole, you know, uh, huge section in Unicode adding these MOGs, and each year there's new ones being added. So, theoretically, infinite. Yeah, so pro, you know, Unicode leaves a space for all the alien languages we discover in the future, for example. Yes. Okay. So uh, how common is this uh, attack vector nowadays? Sorry, could you repeat? This act attack vector on uh, Unicode, I mean, how, how common is that? Uh, uh, do you have evidence that many websites are uh, vulnerable to this kind of uh, issue? Well, so you can see Unicode, uh, uh, at, and there's, I, I didn't speak about Unicode attacks specifically because it's a topic for a separate presentation, but as with every encoder uh, comes uh, also an attack. So for example, there are attacks on specifically on Unicode encoding, for example, UTF-8, <coughs> where you essentially abuse the UTF encoding to try to get some bad effects on the software decoding it. Because in Unicode, there are you know, UTF encoding, there's obviously some rules how you should encode specific character. And then when you decode the character, some of the binary combinations are invalid or forbidden. And you can obviously have software that is trying to decode this uh, UTF-8 and it fails. So it's like, you know, you can have bugs in uh, PNG decoders. Uh, you, there's a whole lot of vulnerabilities in uh, all kind of video format decoders. It's the same thing. So again, if you think about uh, Unicode encoding and decoding as a decoding into binary and, and uh, you know, deserializing from a binary, it's exactly the same class of attacks. At that point where, oh, sorry. At that point, we're out of time. So. Round of applause for Pavel. I'm, I'm here. Um,